sour cream coffee cake. Um, sour cream coffee cake, it's a family recipe. It's my grandma's recipe, Grandma Bibi. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's really, really good, really moist. Um, if you take those out of the oven. Yeah, um, it's still. If there's still like wet batter, then it needs a little more. Maybe like a couple minutes, yeah. Um, where was I? Yeah, so super white's really good. It's got chocolate, walnuts, cinnamon sugar. And yeah, I think it's actually a Ukrainian recipe. A lot of, a lot of sour cream in front of the bouquet. So cool. So let's start on the cookies. Any questions? You guys can like feel free at any time. Yeah. I also have a microphone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello? Hello? Okay. Um, there's like a fun question, I guess, or a kind of difficult question. Um, what is your favorite cookie? My favorite cookie? <laughs> yes. Um, so I actually made, I made these little, uh, these little handouts for you guys. This is just our menu. So I can hand them out. We can take them out of them. So that's what we do currently. The fun thing about owning your own business is you get to uh, <laughs> do whatever you want, really. As long as it makes sense for the business itself. So, and they try to be really creative, um, but yet approachable, right? Because you want to you want to ride that line of okay, it's fun to do outside of the box things, but at the same time, you need to sell these cookies ultimately, right? You have to make money. Um, so, you know, you can do. You can do interesting combinations, but you don't want to scare people away. My favorite cookie that we're doing right now is the espresso toffee chocolate system. Yeah. It's, got, uh, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got the kind of bitterness from the espresso. We take the butter, we brown the butter in that cookie as well. Brown it super dark. Actually, funny story. The, <laughs> the origin of that cookie, I was making my salted brown butter chocolate chip cookies. I was browning the butter. Even for that recipe, I take it decently dark because, as you guys know, caramelization is flavor. And uh, but I took it way too dark, and it was <laughs> it was like burnt, truly, truly like burnt. And um, and I went home, and I and I was like, you know what? I don't want to waste all this because I just started out, and I was like, man, it's a lot of money and butter and this and that. So I was like, okay, I'm just trying to make the dough anyways. So I made a batch. I took it home and. I was like, oh man, talking to my wife. Uh, and I was like, I just can't believe I did this. It's like, I just, should I just throw it away? I'm kind of freaking out. She's like, calm down, like, we can make it work. Let's see what we can create with it, right? So, um, yeah, I just kind of relaxed a bit, realized, like, okay, yeah, it has like this bitterness to it. What else is bitter? Okay, we can do a coffee cookie date. And honestly, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, so now that is part of our repertoire, right? It burns the butter like every single time. <laughs> Not to a point of no return, but you know, it's it's dark. It's very dark. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's got the, the bitterness from the burnt butter, from the espresso, uh, the extra kind of like nuttiness and the sweetness from the toffee, chocolate, obviously also some layers, and then salt. Salt really takes up, in my opinion, everything. Maybe it's my background again of like savory cooking. Um, but I just love salt. <laughs> so yeah, all those things really go well together. And that's what we try to do is, uh, you know, in everything that we do, in everything that we make, we try to not just hit the sweet, right? Sweet boring. Let's, let's, let's think of acidity, let's think of bitterness, let's think of saltiness, let's think of all the things that are on your palate, right? What makes, what makes like something delicious and exciting on your tongue? So we try to incorporate a lot of those things into the different cookies that we make. So um, yeah, if that you know, way around it up, way answers your question. <laughs> um, anything else, guys? And then we'll, uh, we'll get started with it. I just want to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school with Jason. You know. um, Mr. Zay, I don't know if you know him by around here. Yeah. Just talk with Jason. <laughs> Max is a super great guy. I mean, years I've known him. Super talented. The same passion you had when you school, the same passion you listen to right now. So you guys are like you have a nice comment. I do have a good question. Yeah. How many locations right now? Or like what's your what's the plan for your brand moving forward? Yeah, so <clears throat> currently I sell at one farmer's market. Yeah. Uh, we do a good amount of catering events, um, getting into the wedding, planning, wedding, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess yeah, wedding scene. <laughs> um, and then I just launched our new website as well. So ideally I would love to have 
every time our gross sales are coming through our websites, and we can ship nationwide. We already do ship nationwide, um, but I really would love to expand a little bit as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's been a lot of uh, it's been a lot of learning as I go. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like it's. Um, okay. Um, but he asked, um, do you have, like, in terms of expanding, do you have any plans of, like, maybe offering, like, on your website a way to, like, ship the cookies out? Or, you know, is it just, like, a local thing? Are you trying to uh, take it elsewhere? Yeah, so, uh, hey, we, we do currently ship. Uh, so you can go on our website, you can order as many as you could be as you want, and you can put in your, just like any other website, you can put in your address, it'll give you a shipping quote, and then, um, yeah, get them shipped anywhere in the nation. We've, we've shipped to Tennessee, Maine, Florida, everywhere. You know? um, so, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, totally. And, uh, yeah, that being said, that's a whole other side of, of owning Business, right? Like it's super important nowadays to have your online presence, whether that is ideally both social media in as many forms as you'd like, and then a website that is appearing on Google properly, right? And that's a whole thing that I'm going through right now is getting my website optimized for search engine. Um, there's so many things, and I'm not super savvy on all of it, but tagging your, your photos with keywords and, and uh, all kinds of stuff, it's, it's very deep. And that's sometimes where you can't do everything, you know, like you're one person. Um, so you, you have to recognize, like, I can hire someone who's good at these things and, you know, use their expertise to your benefit, right? right. I heard something recently, which is something that I'm trying to live by moving forward because <laughs> yes, I'm a little more of a control freak than I thought I was. <laughs> uh, but if if you, you can hire someone who can do something as well as you can, like seventy percent as well as you can, you should hire them and then delegate the task because that's going to help you grow. And that's going to help you, you know, be able to to manage your whole thing. So yeah, yes, sir. more questions. I got this. Yeah. I'm super excited to see you. Like, <laughs> so two questions. Number one, um, what is I know, you know. <laughs> so what do you what do you think about if we were to feature your product here at the school restaurant, some kind of partnership? Where we'll put your name on it and say Chef Max is those cookies together with some I mean that would be big orders and one of the big orders and we just try to drag and feature one of our own cookies. The second question is this, I'm always thinking about ways to expand businesses, this probably do. what are your thoughts on commercializing some of your recipes? In other words, instead of focusing uh, on it by yourself, when do you uh, sign a contract and have a large commercial plant to use your product for you and ship it nationwide that way scale up super fast? Can you speak a little louder, sorry. Oh yeah, sure. Hi. <laughs> so uh, a lot of times, small businesses, once they start, once they get some momentum, they think about scaling up, right? In terms of going the business super fast, doing international, international foundation wide shipping, a lot of them look for plants and commercial commissaries to scale up the production. But in that process, they lose the generality, they, they lose the, the origin, the, the, the passion, the product quality. What are your thoughts on that path as, as you expand your business? Yeah, you know, it's a uh... So uh, obviously the way to grow ultimately eventually will have to do that if you desire that to be your uh, your path. But it's a uh, it's tricky. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a control freak. Like Ali's been helping me on that. And they like see my recipe. So <laughs> and truthfully, we're gonna create today. We're gonna demo. We're just gonna be candid for this because as a small business owner, you develop like. A set of knowledge, right? A set of all the, all amassing all, all these, you know, ideas and, and, and like, you know, truly 
my software groundwater JavaScript and ASP, I can't even tell you how many iterations of it I've, I've created. Like, oh, this one has two eggs. Oh, this one has one egg and one egg yolk. And this one has melted butter. This one has, you know, room temperature cream butter. This adds this, this adds that, this takes away this, this takes away that. So yeah, I over over the course of years, um, I have created what I think is a really good job. And um, so I'm pretty stingy when it comes to like sharing my recipe. Uh, we're gonna create something that's very close to today. Um, it's, <laughs> I think it's gonna be really good. Uh, but yeah, that being said, like it's it's definitely hard for me to to think about that at this point. Um, I know that there's NDAs and this is not I would consider it <laughs> depending on what it meant for the business. Ultimately you have to grow beyond your ego, right? So um, thank you. Yeah, definitely. And I have a funny story about that too. Um I saw kind of weird things, weird side of things that happen. I work out of a commercial kitchen down in San Diego. So it's a shared kitchen. We book time and uh, probably 10 or 15 or 20 other companies like myself. Um, we all share this kitchen, everyone uses it, cleans up, goes on their way, whatever. So it's really cool because it actually creates amazing community too. And you meet a bunch of these other business owners and what they do. And <clears throat> so I met this guy, Casey, and he does really great croissants and, and, um, and different pastries like that. <clears throat> so I'm talking to him, we're becoming friends. Or, you know, he's like, oh yeah, my, my family used to do uh, used to do garlic gardens, and and I'm like, oh cool, you know, kind of did that. A few weeks later, I'm like, see, what, what what did your you know family do over the garlic here? And he's like, oh, uh, well, have you ever heard of this uh, this company called Bitchin Sauce? And like, if you guys have ever heard yeah. going to Costco mm -hmm. or like anywhere virtually nowadays, like Bitchin Sauce is like this almond based dip, and they're I think like a hundred and fifty million dollar and his family created it. So <clears throat> that being said, in the process of scaling and growing, he told me this story about how they had done exactly what uh, Jason had just asked. They had gone to a co-packer, they gave them the recipes, you know, they, they apparently the people that were doing that realized what a great idea it was. They actually took their recipes illegally on their own, created another brand using the same recipes and um, so it's just like it's interesting you know there's no uh, copywriting in, in the food industry right uh, but that being said it's a different creative path and if you want to take you know if that's the, the way you want to go cool. uh, we'll see what the future brings for me <laughs> so yeah anything else all right, cool. So let's get started. So today we are going to start with what do you mean? Who's the other one for the last piece? The other one. The uh, the other tray with all this stuff. Oh, we used to do the joint thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. This is good. <laughs> Margin really becomes 
pretty low, as you guys know, like in, in the food industry, margin on the on everything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's industry standard is like ten to fifteen percent usually. So, um, so if you're really not watching what you're doing, which this was the case at first for myself, uh, I was making and selling tons of cookies. People love what we're doing. I mean, really. Like, Selling out every, every market, having tons of catering orders, selling out of the at the end of the day, like, I wasn't making money. You know, I was just like essentially working for minimum wage, doing all this work, you know, working six or seven days a week made no sense. So um, make sure that your financials are cool. So we're gonna start. This is the salted brown butter chocolate chip cookie recipe. So we have a half pound of butter, and like I said, we're gonna we're gonna take this pretty dirt. So Coffee mist to it, so yeah. So 
room temperature butter, right? And then you crank the butter into the sugar. That adds a certain texture. This adds a certain texture. It's all kind of just based on how much you want, how much you like. You know? So. Now that we've done that, we are going to. I personally like the texture of one egg and one egg yolk. So we're going to do that. Okay, it just adds a little bit more chewiness, like a little bit more density to the cookie. How do you avoid 
the chocolate from getting like that. From getting like that, yeah, you have to keep it at a, a constant cool temperature. Yeah, so for example, in my, I noticed that it, that was happening at my kitchen where I cook, and so I started keeping my chocolate chips in the fridge. Yeah, just to, especially, especially when you're selling products, right? Like, you don't want your your cookies to have like this chalkiness look to them, to the, the chocolate itself. So. Is it chocolate or is it milk chocolate or semi-sweet? Um, so these are semi-sweet, yeah. And I use semi-sweet primarily. Um, certain things I'll use dark chocolate. But again, it kind of just depends what you're what you're going for, right? Like it's a the balance of okay, do I want do I want this to be very sweet for work? Do I want it to have the bitterness that dark chocolate would bring, or you know, mm -hmm. milk chocolate? Be a lot more creamy and, and sweet for the Cool. So, why don't we, uh, why don't we get to the fun part? Let's stand out some cookies. So, Also has a little bit of a crunch to it too, which is cool. So it actually grows a little bit of 
and you can check it out. But here we can ask them. Um, so cool. How does this work? Don't let me go. <laughs> so now we're going to do our side of the topic. Any questions? Cool. Okay. What's your favorite type of cookie? My favorite type of cookie? In general? Sure, yeah, in general. Um, yeah, you know, probably just a chocolate chip. <laughs> like, I just said recently, like, I was talking to someone. Classics are sometimes just classics for a reason, right? You can try to be as creative as you want to be or whatever, but you know, mixing magic all these interesting flavors, but sometimes just tomato and basil, or like, you know, if, if the ingredients are just high quality and, and done well, talk to a good team. Like, classics are classics for a reason. So, yeah, I think that's probably the answer. <laughs> Cool. So now we're going to do our starting game. Okay. Cake's 
a whole other world. So we're going to go ahead and put our softened butter into the bowl here. And then we're going to cream it with our Don't look for me right now, it's not a big deal. Okay. I'm going to wash everything. Okay. So we're going to cream our butter and sugar, like I said. And we're starting to soften the butter at room temperature. And you're just going to mix it together until. really starts to develop some, some volume to it. And it becomes homogenized as well. And this recipe super particular. I made it by just throwing it all together. It does not turn out as well as, as you think. Um, and that's what's funny about baking, is that sometimes they can just be so precise in its, in its preparation and in the order in which you do things super important. Um, so we're gonna add one egg at a time. I've tried otherwise, it doesn't work well. And then we also have pre sifted the flour too. And I've tried not sifting it, again, it doesn't work that great. So we're gonna add one, let's incorporate it. Sour cream. And 
Yes. It's got a bit of acidity, um, and adds really fat and moisture to the cake. Nice. Again, with the kind of mixing different types of flavors. You don't want just something straight sweet. You want to incorporate all these other awesome tastes that we have on our, on our taste buds, right? <clears throat> so we're going to start mixing that. And then this recipe again calls for the very specific order of things. You have to add a little bit of flour to time. So we're going to add it in basically like bits of three here. So we do a third, but it's appropriate. What are the ingredients in the coffee cake again? Um, I think you get a recipe again. Um, it is, you have butter, you have sugar, eggs, sour cream, flour, baking powder, and baking soda, salt, vanilla, lemon juice. And then at the end, we're going to add in a streusel of chocolate and lemon So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You know, the wedding is pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. So here's the second third of the flour and the dry ingredients. So we have the salt and the baking soda, baking powder in here. Anyone want to share like their dreams of being in food? What are you guys all interested in? <laughs> what do you guys perceive yourselves doing? I would love to open up a bakery or dessert in the world. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. What are some of your favorites? Oh, um, I like Barfi, which is an Indian candy. Yeah. Like candy. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah, that's a. That's a cool concept for sure. Yeah. So, I was just telling Kelly earlier. It's sometimes if you can make it work, awesome. Like do it. Follow follow your passion and like do whatever your calling is. Here. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Like um, you're saying you have like 23 things on your menu right now, right? Yeah, I, I started, when we first started in the Bakery, I had a bunch more. We were doing Parker House dinner rolls, we were doing alfajores, which I don't know if you guys know those are, it's like a, like a South American cookie. It's like citrus shortbread with dulce de leche in the middle, dipped in chocolate, rolled in coconut, on top of sea salt. Those were super good, super time consuming. I was doing a little bit of savory. I was making these like tarts, like a uh, puff pastry on the bottom. We were smoking our salmon, making our own sauces, you know, just all kinds of stuff. 
and I soon learned the realities um, that, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to burn myself out, right? So it's condensed now into good. And, um, and it's cool because I still, I still get to be creative. I still get to kind of, you know, pick and choose what I want to put on the menu. Um, but at the same time, like, it's, it's streamlined and it makes sense from a business perspective, too. So, yeah. Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm shitting on anyone's dreams, but <laughs> you, you, do what you, you do what you're passionate about and make it work. Um, yeah, cool. So we're going to incorporate this last little bit here. Really coming together as a cake batter now. You can just kind of see the texture of it. And then the last thing we are going to add our lemon juice and our vanilla. And again, lemon juice, a little acid, plays well against the salt and the fat and the sweet. So, more depth of flavor. Food clubs are out here nowadays. Are there any? Not anymore? You guys gotta start them. Yeah, back when I was here, we had the United Culinarians, which I think actually Ray, um, I don't know if he goes by Mr. Bishop, he started that. And uh, we had the round table for food professionals. And like I said before, it was, uh, it was great, just community building. And also, we would go and donate our time at food and wine festivals and different events. We're able to just meet industry professionals, and and then you can meet up with them later. You know, send emails, give them a phone call, get internships, get, get opportunities, get your foot in the door, and uh, and then yeah, build your skill sets from there. Right. So now we're gonna put in. Half of our batter here. <laughs> Just a greased little aluminum pan. Oh, yeah, no, Kylie and I were talking about earlier how 
different pins that you put baked goods into affect them differently, right? So something that's metal is going to conduct heat quicker than something that's glass, for example. So you'll have the outsides of your cake or whatever you're baking going to start cooking faster in metal than they would in, in, in glass, for example. So yeah, I, uh, I wish I knew more about it, <laughs> but it's definitely uh, something to think about sometimes too. This guy is definitely a labor of love. So now we're going to go ahead and put our streusel in there. So we have our cinnamon sugar. Let's go ahead and sprinkle some of that in here. About half. We're going to do half of our chocolate chips and half of our walnuts as well. And you're just trying to create that nice marbled look to your cake, right? Because we eat with our eyes first. Thousands of cookies and so much time, so much effort, and 
I was really ultimately working for nothing, minimum wage, you know, and um, you can be super popular, you can you can make tons and tons of sales, but if your financials are not super nailed down, then it's not worth it. So thank you. Super, super important. Yeah. As equally as important as, as the food itself, truthfully, if not more. Um, I had a question about your journey. You mentioned that you used to work in the fine dining scene and you have a lot of experience with savory foods. So I was kind of interested in hearing about what made you transition from the savory world to, I guess, the dessert or the sweet world? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, that, <laughs> actually, I, I truthfully love savory foods still. I, it's, it's funny to me that this is what I'm doing now. You never know your what you have, it's gonna, how it's going to unfold. Um, as I, I think I kind of mentioned this earlier, like when we first started, cookies and cake and the sweet side of things was just half of our business. And I was doing savory tarts because ultimately, like I mentioned, I, I worked in fine dining, in Michelin star restaurants, learned all this amazing technique, all these like, Great flavor combinations, way to balance flavors, this, that, the other. I wanted to bring that to a more approachable setting, right? In a more approachable vehicle for people to eat. And again, at farmers markets, I was thinking, okay, what, what do people, what do people grab, and what's what's popular? What what, what can they take on the go? Right? So that's why I decided to go with the puff pastry tart, you know, or a croissant tart, right? Um, so they have like the base, and then with that you can kind of build all these different things. So I was doing, yeah, making all the sauces, making each of these things were ridiculous little pieces of art in their own right, and and super complex and flavorful. Um, it just it, it just was so much work. It was so much work, and it was just me. Um, and also I was making them to order, and so it kept me. I had a little oven, and then I would have all the mason blocks, and I would have a little setup, and I'm building, 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 putting it in the oven. I'm living right here, right? All the meanwhile, I have customers coming up to the front. It was hard for me to move in between. Maybe I had an employee working. No one's ever going to have the passion that you have. You can have a great employee, but ultimately, I think as we all know, like we're not, we're able to describe and yeah, showcase our our goods and you know the best wares, you know, like from ourselves, from our own passion, right? So so yeah, it kept me right here, right? <clears throat> so I had to pivot, and I decided okay. Um, plus, I looked at the financials, and I was like, you know, this is running like. 33, 35% food costs on this stuff. It's like little fine dining plates on a, on a tart. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, pivoted. And I moved down to, well, what are we, what are we selling a lot of? What, what are people really loving? And also, what is a prepackaged product that I can create that can allow me to be here rather than here, yeah. right? And interacting with our clients. So that was really ultimately kind of what it, what it came down to for me. Um, that being said, I still love savory food. Yeah. Like I, so I'm sure you make some good dinners at home. Maybe. Definitely. Yeah. I'll throw it down there. <laughs> <somewhere there. laughs> we probably have time for like one more question. Anyone in the room or anyone online? You're getting a lot of love online from it looks like a lot of alumni. So anyone else? Any final question? No? Thank you guys All so right. much. Yeah. No, I will just say thank you if we can give Chef Max a, a big round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you all for being here. I am going to close the live stream and then everyone who's in the audience, if you can stay seated for one second, I'm going to see if you can kind of squeeze in um, and do a big group photo. Um, but thank you all for coming and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.